Everybody here take shop class. <laughs> The Bureau of Labor Statistics announced this morning that the U.S. economy added 227,000 jobs last month, and the unemployment rate is 4.8 percent. The report is both the last of President Obama's term and the first of President Trump's, and it suggests a fairly robust economy. But beneath those healthy numbers lies a paradox about the country's much-talked-about manufacturing sector, that the problem may not be with the jobs, but with the workers. Perhaps you've heard that Donald Trump is going to bring manufacturing jobs back to America. Bring back our manufacturing jobs. Reduce taxes, big leagues. We will make Michigan into the manufacturing hub of the world. We're bringing manufacturing back to the United States, big league. But the truth is that there are actually plenty of manufacturing jobs out there right now, or at least job listings. Last year in April, there were 397,000 vacant manufacturing jobs. There haven't been that many openings in more than 15 years. Even this past November, the most recent month we have data for, there were still about 325,000 manufacturing job openings, more than three times as many openings as there were just seven years ago. And it's not like people aren't looking for jobs. There are roughly two unemployed manufacturing workers for each vacant manufacturing job. I asked Scott Paul, the president of the Alliance for American Manufacturing, what's going on. And he had a simple answer, the skills gap. The era where you could go into a factory with just a high school degree is largely over. You're going to need technical training, and that's going to require some new investments in our community colleges and those training programs. There's uh, a lot of really cool things that we can and should make in the United States. Manufacturers in virtually every sector say that advancements in technology have increased the need for people with science, technology, engineering, and math degrees. But the percentage of U.S. manufacturing workers who have even just some college education hasn't grown very much. In 2015, Deloitte teamed up with the industry to publish a report warning that this divergence could cost Americans as many as two million manufacturing jobs over the next 10 years. Now, not everyone is convinced that the skills gap is as big of a deal as manufacturers are making it out to be. Many experts argue that it's simply easier to post jobs than ever before. And asking for highly skilled workers that don't really exist is a convenient way for the industry to avoid blame while simultaneously switching out people for machines. But regardless, restoring American manufacturing is going to be a little more complicated than Donald Trump has made it sound. There are a lot of manufacturing jobs that have either migrated to cheaper overseas labor or been lost to automation. The U.S. has shed about 5 million of them since 2000. So when it comes to unskilled manufacturing jobs, there's very little the White House can actually do to reverse the trend. The good news is that Trump has an easy way to make good on at least one of his promises to manufacturing workers, and that's by investing in vocational education and job retraining. Even if the skills gap isn't as large as it seems, addressing it would be simple, and the payoff would probably begin before the end of his presidency.